No, I work really, really well on deadlines. I almost prefer if things like feel like school in a way. I know that's weird. Structure. It doesn't structure. stress you out. Yeah, I like structure. Yeah. Yeah, I've always been like that. Do you though. know what I've gotten into lately is, this is stupid, but just like writing daily lists, even no, if it's, it's on the notepad on my phone. It, they say that if you write a list of things to do in your handwriting, it's you remember it better. Oh, mm-hmm. really? I haven't written anything down in probably like two months and I wrote something at the hotel that I'm staying at this fancy hotel they give you a little pen and pad and I wrote something in my cursive uh, handwriting and it's just gotten so terrible over the past yes, couple of years. Yes, I blame email. Yeah, I blame technology. Technology. I, I blame uh, John Cena. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, John Cena. Thanks, John what Cena. What does he have to do with it? Absolutely. Is that an inside joke? It's everything. I don't know. I'm just saying nonsense. Okay. I thought I missed you a wrestling reference you and you I didn't know. You can splice out. You can, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. If you ever need a, like a liner with John Are you guys, Cena, do you, you know it. him? He seems to be very, very popular. No, I saw, I was on the plane and I saw a movie with him in it. Uh, Speaking of, you are, are you recording in the middle of recording a new album? I am. Okay. I actually, I should have taken a picture of it. I, uh, um, I had my friend set up a bunch of mattresses in my hotel and, uh, Again, it's like a fancy hotel, like where you really shouldn't touch like the, you know, the furniture. And like he set up like mattresses and like bed sheets and made a vocal booth. Right. So oh I my have... gosh, how funny! Oh, for sound Wait, so quality. you're legit yeah. recording? I'm legit in a random hotel. In a random hotel. A random in fancy San... hotel. Random fancy hotel. Here in the city. Yeah, in the city. You know how we figure that out? We go onto Expedia and then we type five star hotels and then just see the the ones that come up and then we we guesstimate. Think of the best one that rhymes with poor pleasins. <laughs> Oh, and, uh, nice. Yeah, and it's really it's 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 cool. I find it much easier to record in a comfortable space like that um, than in an actual studio because there's no pressure of like, oh, how many thousands of dollars is you know somebody paying an hour for me to be here? It's yeah, just, yeah. I can spill my. Do you do it in tea. your room? Yeah, I do it in my room. Oh, how nice! I just record it myself. I make the beat on the plane, and then I. Uh, Record the vocals. So do you literally in the hotel room? In the hotel room. Yeah. So I need to know what the setup looks like when you're talking about mm. several mattresses. Are they yeah. put together like a like a like, fort, like a pillow like a fort. fort? It's almost like I'm two again, and I'm making a fort. Except there's like a ten thousand dollar microphone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's an advanced. Are fort. you seated in this fort or are you? No, I stand. So and because the, I'm trying to visualize. Forgive me. There's so, a microphone no, in there, okay. right? A stand and everything. There, there's a stand. There's a microphone like this, uh-huh. um, and there's like three. Uh, uh, things kind of like this, which is holding up the microphone right mm-hmm. now for everybody who can't see us. And uh, we have three of those, and it's like really big. And then we put bed sheets and duvet covers over it and kind of make like a, and close it off and put little uh, pieces of duct tape there to indicate the door handles of where you enter the yeah. vocal booth. And then I have my laptop, and then I go in there and I'm like, la, 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 la. And then, la, la, and then record it and there you go and I, I just love how like wow. we've advanced so much with technology but like old school pillow yeah. fort ba- pillow fort yeah mattresses still work <laughs> for insulation oh, which the, is what you want it's the best yeah I recorded attention uh, in a bus really the chorus of attention was recorded in a bus I recorded mother in a basement it's 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 better in my opinion to record places where you know people might listen to the song that's smart yeah. because because I don't. It probably means nothing, but I just feel like it's less sterile than okay. like a like a supremely like organized studio environment. Uh, it's weird. I like my tasks to be organized, but where I record them and where I work, not to be organized. Like yeah. My my brain is a big messy desk with pa- papers everywhere. I need somebody like your neighbor at the at the at the hotel to get irritated and have them call security so that can be on the track. Them knocking on the door. Right. Mr. Puth, can you keep it down in there, please? Oh, my gosh. Well, that's why you get a big room at the corner where no one can hear you <laughs> and you get a, the next room next to you so nobody Shout complains. out to corner rooms, man. They're the best. At the poor pleasance. <laughs> at the poor pleasance. Yeah. Do we have uh, like a, a estimated date when the music might come out? Not right now, but I do plan on putting more stuff out at like the top of the year. I'm obsessed with Mother. That Thank song you. is so, first of all, it's fun. Thank but you. second of all, it makes me feel a little naughty. Yeah. Even though I'm bored as hell in my personal life and have nothing <laughs> going on, I still, in the vi- music video, like everything about that, was that inspired by like something you went through or just like, I don't know, young teenage love or? Kind of, uh, well, the video's kind of like a guy, like a that 70s show kind of vibe. It does. To it. Um, a lot of people got confused with the meaning of it. The mother actually is like the outlook of a, from like an out, from an outside point of view, I should say, of a mother, let's say, into a relationship where she thinks that everything is good. But if she only knew, 
It's, you know, the yeah. two people were... The tearing, dirty things that they're doing? No, they're just tearing each other apart. They're ruining each other's lives. Oh, yeah. even I missed that. Yeah. I just got caught up in like the whole, like the yeah, because whoopsies. I kind of did. I was part of the dumb public. I'm so Wait, sorry. there are metaphors in there? <laughs> I know. There's metaphors in there, but I always throw that in into songs. But it's really about how people interpret the song. Okay. And, yeah. Got it. I love it. So your opinion matters. Okay, good. Thank you. I feel good. I still love the song. Even I, though I feel I'm glad really you don't have a boring life. I know, I don't. Well, in the love, it doesn't matter. Who oh, man. Here That's we right. go. What did we uncover? My, just now? <laughs> right? Random question that has nothing to do with music. Okay. Uh, John Legend on the cover of People Magazine, yeah. Sexiest Man Alive. Any thoughts? Do you know him? Have you met him? I met him a couple. I met him in an elevator. He's very handsome. Is yeah. he that sexy? He, and he th- I, I think so. And okay. I think he sings like a baby angel. <laughs> he I is. Was, He's very cherub-like. You know what? It was funny. Yes, he is. You know, I, I opened up that magazine and I saw me in there. Not like as big of a picture as him, but I was the 27-year-olds, three 27-year-olds, like me and... Wait a minute. Slow down. I don't even have the magazine. I just know he's on the cover. You're in there too? I don't have the magazine either, but I was at the supermarket and I opened it up. And I'm like, oh, there I am. I was a contender. No way! Coming like number six or something, or what? Probably number like ninety two or something. <laughs> Tell me that you were like waiting in line to check out like all like everybody on planet Earth, and you're like, oh, let's see what's going on in People Magazine. That's exactly what happened. Is that was, how it went down? You're buying your beef jerky or whatever. I was well, not today. I w- I was looking for some cinnamon gum. Oh. Okay. Yeah, got some cinnamon gum. There it is. Is that weird to get to a point where you just see stuff about you online or in papers, and you just have to get used to it? Yeah. It's fun to point it out to the people at the cast register, though. You're like, can I have this? No oh, you do that? way. I thought I was the only I one. Did that, that once, like, <laughs> two years ago. Where are you on the coastal press, Marcus? Well, they, they <laughs> okay, real quick, they uh, interviewed my family as part of the Half Moon Bay review. The, the he magazine. lives on the coast, Half Moon Bay. And so they did a spread on, hey, local DJ lives here on the coast or whatever. So, mm-hmm. like, literally, I, ha- I would stand and open it up to the big picture of my family and just stand there and wait and see if anybody would walk by. <laughs> I know, cheese ball, but. He's waiting for your kind of moments. I need that kind of swag. You sounds like you have it. Uh, no, well, in a small coastal community here in the Bay Area, perhaps. Yeah. Now, from like day one to like right now, um, take me through the timeline. Did it did it literally start like, gosh, I hope this all happens to, okay, it's happening, this is exciting, to, oh my God, somebody slow the bus down. Yeah, that's is, pretty much, that's pretty much. Is every, that, is that how? No, that's pretty much what I go to sleep with every night, that progression. <laughs> really? Yeah. You know those. This are, is what I wanted, now I'm overwhelmed. Well. Kind of. I'm still very grateful. Um, but you, you ever watch the Flintstones where the background is just constantly moving? I feel mm-hmm. like that's my like, background, mm-hmm. but like I'm going a thousand miles an hour. I've been on four planes in like three days. Yeah, that's a lot. It's crazy. Do you currently live in Los Angeles then? I do, yeah. And what about your family? They live in LA too, but like out of the city. Okay. Yeah. So for the holidays, do you get to spend time with them and just slow down for a second? Yeah. For like, I think I do it for a record of uh, two days. Whoa. This year. And then I'm, of course. And then you're back on the bus or the tour or the. Tour, bus, or whatever, plane. I don't even remember. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. I try not to even think about like where I used to like, I used to have like such a fear of flying and now I just do it so much. It just dissipated. It just yeah. went away. Yeah. Are there days that you wake up, you don't know what day it is? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I have to go to France. Forgot. <laughs> 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 like it's, it's, a, I, I, I'm happy um, about this life. It's, you know, sometimes it gets a little challenging. Sure. Do you guys do traditional Christmas with the tree and the opening yeah. the presents in the morning? Yeah. Okay. We Big family? Uh, just immediate family. Five people. Okay. My brother, Stephen, who's also an uh, artist too. Oh, that's neat. Sister Michaela, uh, and, uh, yeah, Chuck and Debbie. Who Chuck cooks, uh, who does, does Debbie cook? My, my mom. Mom does the cooking? Yeah, my mom cooks, and it's, it's nice because I get to feel like a normal person for like yeah. two seconds, but the moment I step outside, it's like, Lean chestnut upside down macchiato chocolate. Is latte. it like that? So like literally, if you yeah. wear a hat, like everywhere, somebody recognizes you. Well, if I put a hat on, I look like a pretty average dude. But like, I think I think it's maybe it's my eyebrow that gives it away or something. Mm. I don't know. Is that so? And there's nothing you can do, right? Like if they come up to you, if you're having a dinner or lunch or in line for somewhere. Usually, they're pretty. My fans are pretty respectful. That's and people good. Just in general, are pretty respectful. Yeah. Do you ever get the lurking stares like they want to say something? They don't know how. Yeah. I've gotten in the habit of just being like, let's, let's just, just get it done. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like meeting people too. It's never, it's never a burden for me. I did a, I'm a comic. I did a couple shows in LA last week and my Whitney Cummings is a touring comic. She's a net- I love Whitney. Oh, yeah. well she stopped by the gig I was doing and it was so funny because really? it just reminded me of what she did. 
everyone was fangirling out and yeah. they were like, I'm, I don't want it. And she's like, come on, let's just do a selfie. Like she was ready to go. She's, she's wrapped funny. up. Yeah, she's very funny. Yeah, she is. I've heard her a couple of times on like Howard and, and everything. She's it was very... neat to see her just working stuff out, you know? What's it like being a comedian? You have like, you have to have natural wit <sighs> all the time. Uh, I wish I could do it more because like okay. you, it's a muscle. It's just like maybe like live shows are you had the more you do it, the more you get comfortable with weird things that might. So hecklers happen or what if a joke that's, you love doesn't work? I or, don't know how you deal with that. That's like that's, It hurts my heart. Sometimes I cry when I go home. <laughs> I think it's harder being a comedian than a musician. At times. Really? I really do because you don't have any uh, instrumentation to back you up. It's yeah. just you and your voice. It's so... Raw. I know. I've Raw. always said, I wish I had a fog machine just to make it more like a, like a dramatic, just so it seemed more just, valid. Just like a small little one with like a water bottle at the end of it. Oh, that joke sucked. I'm going to hide. It, do, it doesn't like even, a, it doesn't a even portable start fog up machine. Right. It doesn't even start up at the beginning of the totally. show. Totally. I think people like put way more attention in the shows than usual. I went, I did this thing the other day where they just, they, you know what a kabuki is? The uh -huh. big sheet that just plops and drops. It was totally unnecessary. The announcer was like, it was like 30 people, like a private thing. And they were like, Charlie Puth, everybody. And everyone clapped and everyone was super nice. And then I'm out there, this sheet's up. And the guy's like, can I drop it? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And just <laughs> plops to the ground. And everyone goes, whoa. <laughs> it was just totally unnecessary. They just had like five hundred extra dollars. Trying to, to be dramatic, yet yeah. it's so stupid. I know, and there's nothing you could do. You know, you're a team player. You'll show up. You'll do it. But it's like, okay, it was fun well, I guess we'll, I guess we'll get this done. The event was fun. Really quick, we, um, I saw online you, you did a cover of Louis Capaldi's song. We play it all the time too. I love that love. song. Do you? I love it from the moment that I heard it, and I love that America is falling back in love with ballads again. Mm -hmm. I mm. feel like our hearts are always going to be set with ballads, but like we kind of forget that. A ballad? Yeah, no, lyrics, absolutely man. not. Lyrics are he important. He loves. I, here's the thing. Obsessed with that song. We play that song. I don't know every couple of hours on the radio station, just like every radio station in America. I will still go home and listen to it on repeat on the iHeartRadio app. And I think I even I think I'm nuts. It's just but a there's something song. about that song. It's the it's it's in the musically, which is what I fell in love with it, which I think has something to do with it. And this is maybe way too over analytical, but. There's a there's dissonance in the melody structure in the chorus. So D flat major. Da, 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 where can you go? Ah, you can't go up. Ah, you know, da, da, that sounds weird, but you. And the day days and the night fall. Mm. And you're not here. I wouldn't even know that. It's a, it's dissonance. So it's rubbing notes together and then resolve. Rubbing notes resolve. Rubbing notes resolve. And if you look at other ballads like. I got uh, like someone like you by Adele, which I think was right. the first song with a piano and a vocal to go number one in a wa long while back in like 2011. The uh, A major on the fine, fine someone. Nah, you're not gonna go down. You're gonna go up and the, to the F sharp minor. Someone like resolve. So if there's tension and resolve in a love ballad which there usually is, that usually means that people want to hear it over and over again because they want to have that feeling of, oh, mm -hmm. release. Wow. Yeah. That's music fascinating. Theory. Yeah. Speaking metaphorically, instead of music theory, to kind of dumb it down just a little bit. So yeah. are you you're creating this tension, you're going off this emotional cliff, but mm -hmm. then you're getting caught by a pillow? Yes, exactly. Over and over? That's, see, that's why you guys are here. Because okay. I, go, I go way Doesn't too that animal. sound like an album? Getting caught by a pillow and in some weird pillow. sounds like a great fun experience. Thank you, exactly. And that's why we love those songs. That's why because we love it pillows. creates a feeling inside of us to go, there it is, but we're okay. Yeah, I just like to bitch cry. <laughs> that's Ain't nothing wrong with it. End of the day, it's therapeutic. You. Yeah. You listen to Charlie Puth songs too. I love know. it. We yeah. can't wait for the new album, dude. So the new album has not been named yet, right? Not we're still in the name. works. There's no release date, but you know, all the usual stuff that comes with an album cycle. Of course. An album, mm -hmm. That'll probably all come. So basically, Charlie Puth gets two days off and then he's back on the road for a year and a half. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just finding that out right, right now. I know. He's finding that out right now. Dude. Label? Yep, they're confirmed. Uh, they exactly, just exactly. We'll, we'll look to forward to the new music. I know you. you're going to be in the Bay in December. Yes. That's uh, right. that's for our, our sister station, Wild yep. 949's uh, yeah. Jingle Ball. That's going to be awesome. That'll yeah. be at the Knob Hill Masonic. Yeah, that'll you be You can find it. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then what social media are you most active on that we always... Nothing. Really? Yeah, I try not to look at really? everything. I guess go on Instagram. I put a little funny picture. I like your Instagrams. Yeah. Thank you. I want to be the guy that doesn't have to do social media but still has three million followers on Twitter. Where do we get that job? It's literally, that's literally me. 
That's how to <laughs> do I, it. If I hear the pop Beastie, in once in a while. If I'm on the treadmill and I hear Paul Revere by the Beastie Boys, I'll I'll be like, I like Paul Revere by the Beastie Boys, and then just never look at it. God, and we call it, and then jingle out. Bye. You jingle know what though? Out. You're not giving yourself enough credit. I, I, you know, I know we got to go, but Charlie literally posted, "Ask me anything." And he was answering questions from fans, like randoms. I was, I was on the treadmill. Oh, is that what I, that is? Yeah, Good you, way to you know ever, Charlie's if, working out. If you ever see me answering questions on Twitter right away, it doesn't happen a lot, but that's because I'm on the treadmill. And so smart. Yeah. All right. Good. Awesome, dude. Thanks Thank for coming you guys. in. We'll see you back soon, and congrats on the new album, To Be. To Be. Thank yes. you.